In today's video I will talk about energy efficient home plans for cold climates. I finished architecture, have a diploma in architecture and in the last 15 years I'm doing nothing else, just thinking about how to make the houses more energy efficient. And in today's video I will talk about three different things. What can we do at the level of the inner walls, the level of the outer wall and what can we do outside of our house and all of the things that I will mention it's a thing that it works best with new houses but we can modify sometimes we can modify our existing house as well when we have the electricity the solar power then we transform all of it like a part of it into electricity and we start to heat up our inner walls so we heat up water and we circulate water within our inner walls. Sure, it won't happen like immediately, but in a few hours we'll heat up the walls and in the night time when we don't have sun, we don't have electricity, the thermal mass will remain there. So our walls will heat up the house in the night time. And I have a good question here. I think in the long run we can use copex cables instead of pipes. Copex cables usually are used to house the electrical wiring within the walls and lately they make them like really strong and reliable and I think in the near future even now we can make the inner walls in a way that will run the copex cables in it with water. I know for now it sounds crazy but the benefit would be that with a few hundred dollars of investment we could run miles and miles and miles of hot water within our walls. In the summer we can do the same thing just with cold water but there's a catch. Dew point might be a problem and it's like really really easy to solve it. We need to keep the temperature differences quite low between the walls and between the water because if the water is like too cold water might appear on the surface of the inner walls and we don't want that. And now we talk about the exterior walls. The heat can transfer in three types conduction, convection and radiation. The biggest heat transfer convection basically wind. Just put the house in the shade from the wind and we can do that with the fast facade. So imagine yeah, I'm showing you. Imagine your facade, like your wall, and you have like a 10-15 centimeter gap, like 4 inch, 5 inch gap in front of your facade. And afterwards you have like another layer. And that layer stops the wind. I'm not getting into that, like what kind of layer you should use or what not. That will be like a totally different video. I'm just speaking about if you have a layer in front of your house. And sure, it can look like a facade basically. If you go there, you wouldn't tell you have like a gap or you have like air within your walls. But structurally, the facade is divided in two parts. You can see it like quite well. So <laughs> when the wind blows, it will cool down your facade. And the main idea is that the fast facade, it's not in contact with the insulation and the cold particles from the air will go down. Basically you let the air, not the bubble, but you have like a niche at the lower part and all of the cold air will fall down from your house. So the cold air comes, it hits your house, it will cool down your facade and the other part of the facade, like the cold will go down. And it's in the summertime, you have this gap here. So in the summertime you leave it open so all the hot air will go up. But in the winter, on the upper part you close it and in the lower part you leave it open so the cold air will be able to just go down and that's it. Like, it's really simple. <laughs> the upcoming idea, it's not for everybody because you can't do it, but I will show how to gain a million watts for free on a sunny day. Imagine a U-shaped greenhouse <laughs> near your house. I, I know it sounds crazy, just I want to show you some numbers and you will be like amazed. So the black is your house and that's the greenhouse near it. And long story short, afterwards I just calculated how much energy we gain from the sun every given day when it's like sunny. They say at sea level 
every hour, every square meter, we get 700 watts. That's like a lot. And if you are in the mountains, then every hour, every square meter, we can get 1300 watts. So in my calculation, I worked with like 1000 watts every single hour, every single square meter. I didn't make the most accurate calculations, just like informative, but I said like optimistic, like seven hours of sunshine on the southern part of the greenhouse and like four or four hours of sunshine at the west and the east part. So this way we get every single day 681,000 watts every single day in a sunny day. And I didn't even calculate the facade. And if we calculate the facade, that's like three meters, that's like 10 foot, that means we can easily double it. So that's like one and a half million watts every day. Killing a lot of rabbits with one bullet. Because if you have there the greenhouse, that means all of the heat, not all of it, but most of it will remain in the inside because it can go out. So what will happen? It will start to warm up slowly but surely. It will start to warm up your house from the outside, like daytime, and it will start to warm up the earth as well. And what happens if it warms up the earth? We have like a huge thermal mass for the evening. So basically you will have like a thermal mass, maybe like tens if not hundreds of times more than the house itself. So when it will cool down in the evening can be like a huge difference. So I'm repeating the same idea again <laughs> to really like nail it, like hammer it like a thousand times. So the greenhouse will stop the convection. So the cold air in the evening won't blow away like the hot air from the surface of the facade. It will remain there. The other one, it's like the thermal mass. It will like, it, you will have like a huge thermal mass within the earth near your house that will slowly but surely come back in the evening and won't let uh, be like minus 10 minus 20 celsius it will keep the whole outside of the house maybe at like zero celsius or like maybe a five celsius so basically you might gain like 10 20 celsius for free anytime daytime when maybe in the outside it's like five degrees celsius or like 10 degrees celsius in the inside, in the greenhouse, it will be so hot that you will be able to open your windows and all of the hot air, that's not like 21 Celsius, that's the ambient uh, temperature of your house, it will be warmer. So your inner walls will be heated up directly. So you will feel like it's spring. You will be able to open all your windows when in the outside it's like maybe five degrees Celsius because within the hot bubble, within the microclimate, for a few hours, it will be maybe a 20 or 25 Celsius. So you will be able to warm up your inner walls directly, kind of directly in a way. Like the best of the best energy saving comes here. If you have a greenhouse separately, after a while, the plants go without CO2, so you have to let in the cold air. If you're in the house, after a while you have to open the windows because you have plenty of CO2. But if the two are combined in a single system and it's closed, that means you kind of never have to open the windows and doors because you provide the plants the CO2, the plants provide you the oxygen, and you feed them, they feed you. It's, <laughs> it's like a great deal. And the all of it is sealed, so basically the greenhouse is never open, so all of the heat, it remained in the inside. And I think it, it works like marvelous, because you never have to open the doors and windows and the air will be like crystal clear. So that was today's video, consider to subscribe.